In this video, we consider the language L, which is the set of strings um, M, where M is a TM and the size of the language of M is 3. We're going to show that L is undecidable. So how are we going to do this? Um, we are going to do a reduction from ATM to L. Remember that ATM is undecidable. If we can show that ATM reduces to L, then L must also be undecidable. How are we going to do this? Um, the idea of the proof is to construct a decider, okay, for ATM, that's going to construct another machine that's going to accept exactly three strings, if and only if M accepts W. Okay, and then we're going to use that um, machine with the decider for L and show that um, we can decide ATM this way. So let's start off our proof. So uh, let's let D be the decider for L. We're going to construct A the decider for ATM as follows. Okay, so A is the decider for ATM, so it's going to take input MW. So on input MW, okay, what does it do? It's going to use the description of M and the string W to construct a new TM, let's call it M prime. What does M prime do? Um, remember that M prime is this machine we're constructing that's going to accept um, exactly three strings if and only if M accepts W. Okay, so M prime, um, it's only it's going to take an input, any input. So notice here that X is not necessarily related to W or M, uh, the description of M in any way. It's just any input. It's going to run, actually I'm going to say oops, simulate. just because we aren't actually going to run this machine. So I want to be a little bit more clear about that. So M prime is going to simulate our machine M, this M, uh, the one that we're using for ATM, simulate M on W. Okay, if M accepts W. We are going to um, assume a fixed ordering on the strings in Sigma star. Okay, so what we mean here is that um, there is some first string, there is some second string, there is some third string. So possibly, maybe an easy way to think about this is um, that if A is the first symbol in sigma star, then the first string in, uh, I'm sorry, if A is the first string in sigma, or first symbol in sigma, then A, the single character A, would be the first string in sigma star. If B is the second symbol in sigma, then B is the second string in sigma star. If C is the third symbol in sigma, then C is the third string in sigma star. That's one way to do it. Um, another way would to order would be to order the strings like um, if A is the first symbol, then A is the first string, AA is the second string, AAA is the third string. So um, we know that the number of strings in sigma star is countably infinite, which means we can map it to the integers so we can order the strings. That's all that matters is that there is some ordering.
okay? And we could, we could explicitly tell the machine how to order the strings. This is all possible, okay? Um, we're going to let x1, x2, and x3 be first three strings in sigma star. Okay, so based on this ordering that we're, we're saying exists in some way, however it's defined, then x1 is the first string, x2 is the second string, and x3 three is the third string. Okay, B. If x equals x1, or x equals x2, or x equals x3, except x. Otherwise, reject x. Okay, so this is the end of the description for M1. So what does M1, or sorry, M prime, what does M prime do? It takes some input called x, it's going to simulate M on W. If M accepts W, then we go into this second phase where we check to see if X is one of um, the first, is one of this set of three strings, these first three strings in sigma star. If X is one of these strings, we're going to accept it. If it's not, we reject it. So we see here that the size of the language M prime is going to be three if M accepts W. If M doesn't accept W, then it will never get to the second phase, these things in A and B. Okay, so if M doesn't accept W, then when we construct M prime, the size of its language is empty. It says zero. Uh, its language is empty. It has size zero. Okay, so just be very clear that this um, M prime will accept exactly three strings, X1, X2, and X3 if and only if M accepts W, and if M does not accept W, then um, M prime accepts no, no string, it accepts nothing. Okay, so that is the end of our description for M prime that we're constructing inside of A, our decider for ATM. So after we've constructed M prime, we are going to use our decider D for L. We are going to run D on the description of M prime. Okay, so remember D is a decider for L. And so it can tell us whether M prime, the language of M prime has size three. Okay, so if it does have size three, what does it mean? It means that M accepted W. So if D accepts M prime, then accept, else reject. Okay, um, so now we have a decider for ATM. Let's convince ourselves that A is actually a decider for ATM. I think I need a new screen. So, uh, I'll see if I can remember all the notation I had on the last screen. So, let's say, um, what happens if A accepts MW? Well, it does so only if D accepts M prime. And that happens if, um, if the size of the language of M prime is three. And this can only occur when M accepts W, right? Let's double check. So here the size of the language is three if M accepts W. That's how we end up here, where we construct a language of size three. Okay. So that part works. So basically here we have that A accepts MW if M accepts W. Okay, so right now A is a recognizer for ATM. To prove that it's a decider, we have to see X when it should reject. So if A 
rejects u. It did that because d rejects m prime. And it does that because the size of the language of m prime is zero. Okay, so remember, um, the only way we get into the second phase to actually accept any strings at all is if m accepts w. If we don't get into the second phase, then we accept no string, no string x, and then the size of our language is zero. So, and the size of the language is zero when m does not accept w. Okay, so here, then A is a decider for ATM. Okay, so now we've constructed a decider for ATM. We know that ATM is undecidable. So we have a contradiction. What is our contradiction? It was this assumption that a decider exists for L. And notice here we didn't actually um, define what this decider is for L. We didn't say this is a specific decider for L. We just said this decider exists and it decides the language. Okay, so what we have here is this is the contradiction. That decider cannot possibly exist. A decider for L cannot possibly exist because it allows us to arrive at this contradiction. Thus, uh, L is undecidable.